Welcome to Rising Stars, where Miriam Knight, publisher of New Consciousness Review, interviews exciting new voices in the world of progressive and transformational books, films, and ideas who offer intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us as we celebrate the conscious awakening and explore many expressions of consciousness in action. Today, we have Donna Eden and David Feinstein, who over the years have become very good friends. Donna Eden is a pioneer in the field of energy medicine who has served in both traditional and alternative healthcare settings. She's recognized for her innate ability to accurately determine the causes of physical and psychological problems based on the state of the body's energies and to devise highly effective treatments. David Feinstein is a PhD clinical psychologist who has served on the faculties of the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Antioch College. He's the author of eight books and more than 80 professional articles. He has been a pioneer in the areas of energy psychology and energy medicine. Together, they have co-authored Energy Medicine, Energy Medicine for Women, and The Promise of Energy Psychology. They now have a new book called The Energies of Love, Invisible, Invisible Keys to a Fulfilling Partnership. And I am so pleased to welcome them. Donna and David, welcome. Oh, thank you. It's very nice to be here, Miriam. Hi, Miriam. Good to be here. You know, I'm so happy to have you back on the show because you are two of my absolute favorite people on the planet. <laughs> That's really nice. You know. I was reflecting on why that is, and I think it's because the two of you just kind of radiate your love for each other. Now, reading your new book, I see that you are actually human and that, <laughs> and that your relationship took a lot of work. Oh, my gosh. It took so much work. I mean, we were so incompatible, and uh, not many people gave us a chance of making it. And uh, we really had to find other ways other than anything psychological to be able to um, to deal with this because we really got that this was an energy thing and our energies would get off with one another. We would get off on different wavelengths than one another so that we couldn't reach one another or find one another. Did you appreciate at the time that it was an energy thing? I mean, I'm curious, David, you taught at Johns Hopkins and at Antioch. <laughs> At what point in your career did you open up to the possibilities of energy psychology? Which surely it wasn't mainstream at the time. It was not mainstream. What, <clears throat> what did make sense to me, though, was that our bodies are biofields. Our bodies are energy fields. And um, that's, that's actually more familiar to people than they realize when they first hear it. Because you know that your heart has an energy field that an EEG will pick up on. And your brain has an energy field that an EKG will, will pick up on. Or I said those backwards, but um, EEG for the mm -hmm. brain, EKG for the heart. And um, what's, what most people don't know, though, is that the energy field of the heart is about 50 times stronger than the energy field of the brain. And when two people are together, the energy field of the brain entrains itself. It, it, it resonates with the energy field of the other person's heart. And so we are affecting one another all the time energetically in ways that are beneath the surface, beneath language. <clears throat> They're beneath what we're aware of, but they are really strong impact on how you feel about one another, on how you perceive one another, on what it occurs to you to say to one another. And so there's this, this invisible world going on between the two of you. And it, it, was, it was years for me to really grasp that and grasp how important it was. But that really helped save us because from, from the start, when when I met Donna 38 years ago, she was just getting into the energy work, but she could always see energy. That, that was a gift she had um, from birth. 
And so she, so, so it was very much part of her life. And after, um, you know, our, our, our initial struggles, she began to find ways to really use that awareness of energy to improve the energetic connections between us. So it was beyond, as she said, beyond psychology, it was beyond what we would talk about. It was really establishing with one another an energetic that supported the relationship. And that is what I think um, really got us through some some very big challenges. Mm -hmm. Now, The Energies of Love is, is really, in many ways, a very, very personal book. What inspired you to write it? Oh, um, well, we felt that if we could make it, anybody else who really wanted to make it, even when it felt that they were incompatible, we could give them the tools that we had learned. We could, we could show them how to shift their energy so that they would be on the same wavelength with one another and that they would find that so, so much of what goes wrong between a couple is not even psychological. It is simply our energies. And shift your energies, and it will shift your mind anyway. And our, our journeys had been so challenging with one another that um, it, it, it was just interesting to try to, you were just curious, well, how did we pull this off? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and to really write about what was important, what made a difference for us. And um, we've been teaching this for about 30 years. We've been teaching um, our, because we figured it out in our first seven years, we'd really really figured out a lot about this. And we uh, offered a workshop 30 years ago called The Energies of Love. And, um, and that, that, that work, and it, it just so happened that 300 people came to it. It was 12 hours. It was every Tuesday night for four consecutive three-hour sessions. And, um, and, and in Ashland, Oregon, where, where we lived, um, years later, decades later, people would still talk about that workshop and how much it helped them either stay together or realize that they couldn't stay together. And both are, are legitimate outcomes. And, um, and so we started teaching that workshop and we've been teaching it for 30 years and, um, and really refining the concepts and finally putting it into a book. And mm -hmm. we're really pleased that um, the book has, you know, it, hit the New York Times bestseller list, and it, um, it also um, was um, just named U.S. Book News um, Relationship Book of the Year. So we're, we're real pleased with the way it's been received. Well, congratulations. And, and really, having read the book, I, it is absolutely, totally well-deserved. Uh, it, it, it encompasses so much. I mean, it, if, it's a big book to start with. And <laughs> it's well organized. You've divided it into three parts. You talk about the inherited aspects of love, the learned aspects of love, and the aspects that you have mutually created. And, and then each of these sections kind of dives deeply into the energetic dynamics. Can you give us some background on how you came to understand the energetic interplay? Yes, well, we we knew we had something new to say, but we wanted to say it in the context of all the new information that's developed about relationships. In the last 10 years alone, couples therapy is done very differently than it was a decade ago. Um, we, we know from fMRI studies, we can see what happens in a person's brain when they think about the person they love. And we can see how it's different in a good relationship that is new from a good relationship that is 15 years old. <clears throat> and we can see what happens in a person's brain when they're in grief. And we can see what happens when they think about their partner's face. So we know a lot at the biochemical level of, of, of the neurology. And we know a lot about what um, in a therapy setting works and what doesn't work. And so we wanted to put our model into the context of all the new information. And we, and we, we had more than a hundred books that we were reading. There's so much out there on relationship. And 
we um, we just were trying to figure out how to organize it. And it was actually, we were both swimming one day in the pool, <laughs> in the condo, and we realized that, that it really fits into these three categories, that there are things that you inherit that you cannot change from your gender to certain aspects of your personality to very basic energetic differences from one person to the next that determine a lot about how they process information, how they fight, how they love, how they want to be loved. It's at an energy level, not just, you know, and it's inborn. So, uh, so that's, that's the first section of the book. And then we also realized that a lot is also learned right from the start, your relationship with your primary caregivers, with your mother, that does do the caregivers understand you or do they judge you? Do they tune into your, your um, needs and, and your wants or do they really kind of um, um, punish you for, for having needs? Do they teach you how to soothe yourself? All of that happens very early and then there's the relationship that your parents model. And there's all the things that you learn from your culture and what you see on TV and you see all over the place and what you get on the Internet now. So that there's so much that is learned. And we've never, as a, as a people, really been able to overcome some of those most basic learnings until now. But with energy psychology, it's possible to go in and energetically change very deep learnings, change mm -hmm. the deep models that are there in ways yeah. that well, other generations couldn't do. Right. So well, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that in a moment, D David. We have to go to break now. We're speaking sure. with Donna Eden and David Feinstein about the energies of love. Something really good that I've never heard you say. You said it different. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Healing Light, on Own Times Radio, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Healing Light... We want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. Hi, this is Sylvia Henderson, Intuitive Life Coach and Energy Healer. Are you ready to elevate and rise way above your normal? Be sure to listen to my show, Intuitive Transformations, on Own Times Radio, Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern. Get the inspiration you need to transform your life. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network, bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Site for this book, what is it? It's energiesoflove.com, www 
energiesoflove.com. Okay. Well, we'll come back to that. So now you were talking about the three sections about the um, innate uh, energetic aspects. And I was wondering if that's what you mean by the energetic stress styles that you describe in the book. Uh, Yes. I think that's really important for couples to understand that when you get stressed, you don't choose your behavior. You don't choose how to think about something. In fact, we, we, we evolved a streamline for survival. And so everything that is not necessary to survive goes out the window. And, um, and the problem with that is, you know, we lose blood from our forebrain that goes into the body for the fight or flight response. And our sensory systems streamline so that because we are attracted to somebody different than us usually, it, and it may work wonderfully when we're happy with one another, when we get stressed, it's very hard to connect sometime or make your partner understand what you're saying or thinking or feeling or knowing. And you just, you can really pull apart more and more and lose that bond. So your sensory systems um, that, that you rely on when you're very stressed out or having a difficult time with your partner, uh, to really understand that not only brings enlightenment, it allows you to reach your partner and also have compassion for your partner and, and a curiosity about what your partner, how your partner thinks and ticks around something. But it really helps you then to be able to shift, to help you both be able to shift the energy and, um, and, and, and connect. Uh, would you like to hear what those, what those different types are? Absolutely. Okay. Well, David, I'm going to, t- David is a digital. He's a primarily a digital, which means kind of like a, a Mr. Spock, you know, the classic Mr. Spock. Mm-hmm. And he's calm, he's cool, he's collected. He compartmentalizes things very easily. They don't run into one another. Um, he, he, can, he can get cut off from himself and his own feelings as well as his partner. Now I'm talking about when he's really stressed out. This is what he goes to. He, but he detaches and he then goes into a place of, I'm right, I'm right. And I'm not going to pay much attention to what you're saying because, because you know, the idea is you'll come around. He doesn't want to argue. He doesn't want to fight. He just, he just has a rationale and a, even a righteousness about how he thinks because he has moved up into his head and, um, and that's what his survival is all about. You know, when he's not stressed, he's incredibly kind and he, he can access all of the other systems and, and it's wonderful. But boy, under stress, it was tough. The other thing I found out about him is uh, when, and it was totally perplexing to me, was that if you cried, it <laughs> turned him off even more. Now, I, would, I always expected that if you cry, you would really be able to reach that person through feelings. But he moves away from feelings under stress times. That was a real issue for us because I move toward feelings. I'm a kinesthetic, which means it's about feeling. And I, um, I, I don't have that kind of rationale. Um, I'm not analytical. I, I move out of my head, and I'm just in that realm of feeling, and it hurts. And I want, I want my partner not to hurt either. I don't want my partner to hurt. So if, um, depending on just how bad it is, I might totally move into wanting to take care of him. Or it might really, really be bad that I'm perplexed that he's not feeling at all. And so... Um, I can also lose my words. I can lose my truth. I just, I move into that state of, um, well, I, I'm, I'm just really lost, you know, if it, if it got really bad. So you can imagine how important it was to be able to gain some rationale back. Now, that's David and I. And for me, <clears throat> over the years, one of the things that it took a long time to learn was that <clears throat> for Donna, feelings are facts. This was the oddest concept I'd ever heard. (laughs) 
that feelings are facts. The facts are the facts. The feelings maybe color the facts <laughs> a little bit, but the facts are the facts. But for Donna, it's just the opposite. It's like in a relationship. It's the relationship that matters. It's the feelings between the two people. That's the truth. That's what the facts are. And what she would say is that the facts, that's what your partner resorts to when he's wrong and trying to justify himself. <laughs> it's the feelings that matter. They're the truth. And so you can imagine how it took us a while to um, kind of sort all this out. And it sounds like it's Mars and Venus, but it's really a little different because there are four styles and Don's going to talk about the other two and men can be any of the four women can be any of the four and what's really interesting is that we almost always are attracted to someone who is energetically different from us so they use a different stress style when they're when they're um, really pushed into those arguments where relationships get formed because it's when you're under stress and pressure, that power relationships get established, that your shared realities get established. Mm -hmm. So these are really important moments. So do you want to talk about the other yeah. two types? Okay. So the next type <coughs> is a visual. Now, visuals like to keep eye contact. They, they want to look you straight in the eye, and they see precisely what you are doing wrong. And for the partner, it feels like they are being blamed that they're being criticized. But for the visual, they're bewildered and disappointed that their partner isn't doing what is obvious to make everything better, to make their lives better. They think they're giving their partner a gift and giving them their truth. And, um, and that's what they're good at. They're, they're the visionaries. So yes. each of these, when they're not under stress, they have a great talent. They have a great deal to offer visuals, are able to really see into the future. They're able to see, uh, evaluate a situation according to how it can be improved. And the problem is that when they're under stress and they're looking at how you can be improved, and it may not be the way you think you <laughs> want to be improved, and that become can become very, very <laughs> tense and hot little, little <laughs> argument. Okay, tonals. Um, tonals want to be heard, and they do not feel that they are being heard. Um, they, they, they can also be analytical and critical, but they are also feelers. They're, they sit in between because their heads work, their, their emotions, they become very emotional. They are hurt by their partner's tone of voice even more than what they're saying. So they hear between the lines of what their partner is is saying they, they they're very sure they know what their partner actually means so they um they it's like it's like they have sonar they tune in at a different level and they they can really suffer over perceived put downs and they even withdraw being very sure that uh, the partner rejected them but they actually are doing the rejecting many of the times. But they can tune out of the world and be up in their own heads also, just going over and over and 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 want and desperately wanting to be heard. But at their best, they're the artists, they're the people that really can appreciate the aesthetics of life. They are tuned into nuances, and that's part of what trips them up, is that they'll tune into the nuances through the filter of their insecurities through the filter of their past hurts so that that the, those nuances get exaggerated and distorted. So it may be as simple as something in the partner's tone of voice that sounds critical to them, even though the partner isn't there at all, not being critical at all, but they will feel rejected. They will know they were rejected and they can't be talked out of it. So that's, um, that's, that's the real hazard for each each of them has some real strengths and some real hazards and what what's important to understand is that these are four ways of processing information and we all use all four of them but under stress you are wired to trust only one of them and so as Donna said the other three do go out the window so you are distorting your reality 
in a very particular way and your partner is distorting reality in a different way and they don't match well so that that's that's why people that love one another still get into these horrible fights where they're they're screaming at one another where they they've really lost it and um and so to understand that dynamic as donna said gives you more appreciation for your partner more empathy for yourself and this this is um really a start towards uh towards making a bridge where there had been a, a rock obstacle so um af- after the break we can maybe talk a little bit about what you can do about some of these things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That absolutely fascinating to hear both the the uh, kind of raw and the positive side of each um, energy personality. I guess you'd call them energy personalities or energy styles. Because we we emphasize that these really um, are most prominent under stress mm-hmm. because when you're not under stress, you really use all four. You still may dominate with the one that you go to under stress, but um, but all four are are um, are available, so that's why we call these energetic stress styles. Yeah, well, I'm sure that everybody has had the experience of seeing this Jekyll and Hyde done, <laughs> <laughs> emerge under stress. <laughs> so, um, do people with the same uh, energy stress style? ever get attracted to each other or do they tend to get repelled yeah they they don't tend to get attracted to one another occasionally um tonals will be attracted to one another because there are different kinds of tonals and um they won't be the same kind they get attracted to one another but if you think of two magnets that the the, you know the same poles Mm -hmm. repel one another Mm -hmm. so that's what happens with people as well fascinating Well, we will continue the conversation with Donna Eden and David Feinstein after this break. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Come on down. You're the next listener of the Joe Show's second annual salute to game shows, Price is Right, Uncensored. A two-part series airing on Wednesday, March 9th and Wednesday, March the 16th. We will take you back all the way to September 4th, 1972, the first day Price is Right aired on CBS the Joe Show speaks with longtime former producer Roger Dobkowitz, Million Dollar Spectacular announcer Randy West, and longtime former Price is Right legendary host Bob Barker. So mark down Wednesday, March 9th, and Wednesday, March 16th, 9 p.m. Eastern, Own Times Radio on The Joe Show. that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to in your busy world how do you improve yourself and keep your life going i'm lisa k and my between heaven and earth radio show can transform your life just by listening be uplifted with inspiring topics positive stories and ideas that really work between heaven and earth radio is conscious living for your soul every wednesday at 4 p.m eastern time 
Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of OM Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of OM Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. The cutting edge of conscious radio, OM Times Radio, IOM FM. Visible keys to a fulfilling relationship, a fulfilling partnership. So one of the things I found so fascinating in the book uh, was the actual physical connection between energies and hormones, particularly the, the energetic interventions when you know, the, the stress gets, uh, gets up to your head and you see red and all logic goes out the window. You have these wonderful exercises for cooling the fires. Um, give us a, a few examples. And uh, particularly, <laughs> I loved the one about testosterone in the man cave. <laughs> testosterone in the man right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes well it's true that um, when when partners are really going at it with one another that they historically our ancestors ancestors needed to depend on their closest relationships to survive so any threat to your relationship gets those primitive parts of the brain involved. And it can it doesn't have to be a physical threat. It can be simply that your partner isn't acting in a way that you are familiar with or know how to relate to. And that um, that sends all these hormones through the bloodstream and your rational mind, your your front brain is not in charge anymore. And I think most couples have experienced that, and it's a—it's really a terrifying thing and very discouraging. And it it does shape relationships, as we were talking about earlier. So we developed what we call a pact to interrupt this, because at those times, communication exercises, what therapists used to teach, um, don't work. They you, you you cannot access them, and you don't even want to access them at those times. At those times, you just want your partner to know that you're right, or to know how much you've been hurt, or to you know you just you're just geared for the fight. And so the pact, the first part of it, is actually the hardest. It seems like the easiest, but it's the hardest, and that's to stop. And so you you nothing in you wants to stop, but the way that people can stop at that moment is that you you have, in good times, negotiated that this agreement, this pact, that if either of you says the pact or says, let's stop, that you both do it. And you don't just stop, you stop and immediately do an energy exercise that is geared towards getting your hormones back into balance, geared in getting your individual energies back in balance. So you're, you take the attention off the relationship and onto your own energies. And so the, that's the second part of the pact. And Donna will talk about some of the exercises that she has found most valuable for the individuals to use at those times. Well, again, you have to shift your energy. It's not about uh, you know thinking through things you know intellectually or in your mind or in your emotions. So one of the things that we have people do is to blow out just every all the imbalances, all of the upset, just blow it out. And if you swing your arms above your head, and then very very slow with a slow determined energy going down your body with your arms going down until your breath is completely let out and let it go and do that a couple of times that alone begins to switch the energy um, and then uh, then there are several things depending on the person we're all a little bit individual but then zipping up coming back to yourself taking your hands at the bottom of your body and pulling them up the front to the bottom lip 
and just taking a breath there. Um, for me, my energies tend to scramble, really scramble so that I can't think at all. So I like to uh, unscramble my force fields with an energy that of crossing everything in my body that I can, crossing my legs, crossing my knees, crossing my hands, crossing my arms, and then breathing in and out slowly, in through your nose and out through your mouth very slowly. And, um, and, and that one, I begin to find myself again. My mind begins to work again. Um, and so that's always the first ones that we do. Um, there's another one that I think is really, really important. is like just tapping underneath your, I mean, right on top of your cheekbones, taking deep breaths in and tapping. You don't think anything. You just do this in a rote way, and the energy begins to move down your body and ground you. And it, it also helps right afterwards, if you put your hands on your forehead, the blood begins to come back up into your forehead because your hands are are, are electromagnetic and so is the blood and you can draw your blood back up into your forebrain so these are just some of the first ones we do mm-hmm. and then once you've gotten your own energy stabilized then you can do that both in the same room and you can be doing um, the the uh, different exercises like where Donna likes to do one that gets her energies crossing over Another very simple one of that is to just dig into your shoulder. Say, take your right hand, put it on your left shoulder, dig in behind the shoulder, pull your fingers over the shoulder really hard and down to the opposite hip. Do that three times and then do it on the other side three times. And that helps get your energies crossing over. For me, it, there, there's other exercises that really help me One of which is to, because I'm so in my head, is to tune into my body. And it's a little meditation that Stephen Levine taught me years and years ago. Um, And and it's called Notice Breath, Soften Belly, Open Heart. So you start by just tuning into your breathing. Just notice your breath. Then you instruct yourself to soften your belly. That lets the energy start to move. And then by the time you get to open heart, you're really able to not only relax your chest area, but really feel your heart opening. So Mm -hmm. that's, that's one that's really valuable for me. And once you've done these personally, individually, and you've gotten yourself back hormonally and energetically to center, then you can turn to one another and begin to connect energetically. And that, um, that, and still this is before, you're not returning to the argument, you're not talking about it, you're not thinking about it, maybe you are thinking about it, but you keep coming back to your body and to working with your energies. And a very simple one you can do at that point, and it, it seems almost too simple, but it's very valuable, is face one another, put your hands over your chest, which is your heart chakra, right in the middle of your chest, Look at one another and take three deep breaths. Or if you're not ready to look at one another yet, (laughs) (laughs) you can, with your hands on your chest, just start looking your partner up the body. Just look up. And for me, it's very valuable to see my partner with his hands right on his heart chakra. And it, 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 it literally can begin to melt me because I realize how much he is putting effort in to move down into his body. Yeah. And it's very touching. And we're both standing there with our hands on our heart chakra, facing one another, looking. And then we can lift our, our eyes up and to see each other's eyes. And it's, it, it, it does shift the energy. Something begins to connect. Mm. I think the uh, other uh, moving from the the calming of the energies, uh, you move into a wonderful exercise you describe, a verbal exercise called, Do You Mean? 
I thought that was so powerful because people, uh, it, it's like Don Miguel Ruiz's Four Agreements. Uh, we always make assumptions about what we think the other side is feeling or meaning. And then we find out that, that we're totally wrong. Yes. Exactly. So now you're getting into the fourth phase of this pact, um, the fourth and final phase, which is returning to the communication. So you've gotten yourself centered. You've gotten yourself energetically aligned with one another. And now you can really use effective communication tools to take the conversation further. And the do you means is my favorite one. Um, <clears throat> and it's, it's very simple. What you do is the one partner makes a statement. Go ahead, Donna, make a statement. Um, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, like, do you mean? Do you mean? No, just, just say a statement. How are you feeling oh, about this talk? Oh, 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 well, this is, oh, I'm really enjoying talking with Miriam. Do you mean that it's nice to be back in touch with Miriam? Yes. Okay, so that's one yes. I have to get three yeses. Okay. Do you mean that you're getting to say everything you want to say? No, no. Right. No. Okay, so that was <laughs> not what she meant. Do you mean that you're getting to say a lot of what you want to say? Yes. Uh -huh. So that's two. Do you mean that this is fun? Yes. Okay, so I got my three yeses. And but that was a lot easier than if, if he was asking me if we were in a, a heavy, heavy place with one another. I mean, it would be about what we're going through. And so it, it, I might say, you know, I don't feel heard at all. And he would say. And, and then I'd go to that. Do you mean that you, you believe that I'm not trying to hear you? Yes, I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, so that's that's really good information for the partner to have. Sure. So that you you just go deeper into what what a simple statement means, and it's amazing how many aspects and dimensions it has. Well, I found this to be such a powerful technique. I mean, it's just one of many amazing tools that you provide. Well, we're going to be back with our last segment where we're going to be talking about sex. So of course you'll want to come back and listen. <laughs> we're speaking with Donna Eden and David Feinstein about the energies of love. Did you say get the book? Yeah, I had to read. <laughs> with Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi, this is Sylvia Henderson, Intuitive Life Coach and Energy Healer. Are you ready to elevate and rise way above your normal? Be sure to listen to my show, Intuitive Transformations, on Own Times Radio, Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern. Get the inspiration you need to transform your life. Hi, everyone. This is Shay Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, free psychic readings, and so much more. I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. And David Feinstein about the energies of love. 
And one of the energies, of course, is the energy of the sexual relationship. And I love your chapter heading that says, sex is nature's energy medicine for couples. Um, like any other aspect of the relationship, would you say that it's accurate to think that it uh, is founded on communication? And not for me. Maybe it is for David, but <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's I, I, because I am such an energy person. It's like I want to feel energetically bonded and connected. And so truly, you know, all day long is foreplay before we ever get to the bedroom. You know, it's it's that bond that I feel. And when I also feel that he has, he has really uh, done the energy work to come over and connect to me when we're not connected. Oh, I just melt. I melt and I want to be even bonded more. Okay. Now I read the book, so I know what you're saying. But <laughs> for our listeners, I want to point out that anything like just complimenting someone on something they did or, or taking out the garbage or drying the dishes or just expressing concern is what Donna refers to as foreplay. Yeah, yes, that, yes, that's right. That's right. Yes, that's that really is foreplay. It's like, wow. And, and one of the things that David does really wonderfully, every time we pass one another, we hug. Mm -hmm. And and we and we stand there. We don't let it just be a quickie hug. We stand there and hold one another until uh, it just an amazing energy begins to happen and you and you melt. Well, in just 7 seconds of hug there are hormones that get generated, uh, oxytocin and um, other bonding hormones. And what happens for couples is that, you know, we're, we're all familiar. It's not, not every couple's journey, but for so many couples, they start out with a real intensity and their passion is strong. And that's nature's way of really getting two people to bond and to bond deep enough that they can um, raise children. But that nature didn't set that up to last in, in that same way. But there is a deeper bonding that can occur. And what's, what's really tragic for so many couples is that they don't pursue it. They don't take the time. They don't even have the concept that they can really get their passion going again. And th and it it does require some time and concentration to um, to do that effectively. It it, re it requires more. It, it you know we talk about how to keep a relationship hot. Each individual needs to be growing on their own right, separately from the relationship. But the relationship also needs to be tended to, and that's that's um, one of the ways where. It's, it's a two-way street when we say sex is nature's energy medicine for couples because sex does exactly what energy medicine does for the body. It keeps the couple alive and passionate, but you, you, um, it, it, it doesn't happen if you don't do it. <laughs> and mm -hmm. that's why we, um, we so enjoy uh, Alison Armstrong's um, saying um, that first... Um, first say yes, then create the wanting. And what, what she's meaning there is that in, in the busy lives that so many people have today, that they, they just don't, you know, kind of, um, they, they wait until the attraction is strong and it's not there because there's so many distractions. And if you say yes and then create the wanting, and you can do a lot of things energetically to create that wanting. So you you say yes, and you spend the time together, and you maybe give one another a spinal <laughs> flush. That's one of the um, exercises from part three of the pact, where one person lies on their back, and the other simply massages along the spine. And it's not on the spine, but right to the left and right of the spine, going in deep, and that 
really is a wonderful gift to give to a partner. It balances them, it relaxes them, it gets all their energies moving because that, every meridian will be um, stimulated by going down the spine that way. And so just having simple techniques that you can do together rather than this sort of, okay, we've scheduled the time, now what? So <laughs> right. you, you, you really build that energy, and that does create the wanting. That does get the passion going. And um, it's, you know, we start that chapter by saying, uh, um, you know, we're revealing that we're not sex therapists. We're not trained in sex therapy, but um, we've, in order to write this chapter, we've been reading the best of them and... Right. And the research was such fun. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. Research was such fun. Yeah, yes. the research was such fun. And and writing the chapter was the best thing that had happened to our sex lives in many years. <laughs> so and, and all couples can do that. You know, if you really put the focus there, put the energy there to say, okay, let's let's bring the passion back into this relationship. And let's figure out how to do it. The information is out there. And we've tried to synthesize a lot of that information into this chapter. Well, it, it was a wonderful chapter. Uh, I, I don't want us to run out of time before we talk about the, um, the questionnaire to find out what your own type is. Tell right. us about that, David. Right. We... we um, really wanted people to have a way that they can begin to identify their own energetic stress style and their partners. And we figured out a, um, a quiz that's in the book, but your listeners can also take that quiz for free on our website. Which and, again is? And so it's www.energiesoflove.com. So if they go there, they can learn a bit about the book, but there's also this quiz that takes only a few minutes and it's only got 10 multiple choice questions. And by the time that they finished it, they just send it in and they'll, it'll be scored and they'll be told what their stress style is and told a little bit about what that means. So it's a, it's a very nice um, resource that they can plug right into. Great, great. So what do you think is the most important takeaway for either couples or individuals reading the energies of love? Well, for me, the most important takeaway is that it is all about energy. I mean, the truth is energy is all there is. I mean, we, we, things are built up upon that foundation, but we, we still... Um, live our lives in so many ways as our ancient ancestors did. And when that fight or flight response turns on, it's not something that we've, you know, uh, that we can talk ourselves out of in our heads. But the more you have tools to understand yourself and your partner and tools to shift the energy from where you were stuck, well, it changes everything. I mean, it changes everything everything. You will probably also want to learn more beyond just the relationship because again, I mean, energy medicine is about healing the body, mind, spirit and soul. And so it is just a fun thing when it begins to happen with your partner and it's not just your own little journey here that you're on. Beautifully said. I, I remember a lot of the exercises in the book from the workshops I've taken with you, Donna. Uh -huh. And it's interesting to see them uh, in relation to different issues, you know, the, the partnership issues. Yes, yes. Thank you. And I sure remember you in classes, Miriam. <laughs> <laughs> now, David, what's your final takeaway? Well, it's very similar that to have the lens of energy as you know, because you think of relationships, we understand them according to the biochemistry um, between the partners, the psychology between the partners, the interpersonal pieces of it, the, the communication piece. But to add to that an understanding of the energy brings it to another level. And 
even though those energies are invisible, they're palpable, they make a difference, and there's a lot that you can do to enhance those energies. There's a lot you can do to get a flow with your partner between those energies. I, I want to say one more thing before time is up. You can use these understandings not just for your mate, but also with your children, with people you work with, with your friends. You suddenly understand why they are reacting differently than you or why your children, one child will really respond to what you're doing and the other child won't. I mean, every I turned on a dime when I really grasped that my children were different energetically. And, uh, and I... And I began raising them actually different from one another because I understood that when they were stressed, you needed different tools for each of them. And it has re it really helped us all. And my kids actually do a lot of teaching of it themselves now. Fascinating. Yeah, I, I meant to ask you that. So I'm glad you, you jumped in with that because it is important uh, to all of our daily interactions. Yes, yes would be interesting to analyze our various uh, political figures for their energetic stress style. Oh my goodness. I think this is so important. <laughs> yes. I'd like to do that. Oh, well, we won't go there. We're out of time anyway, but we have been speaking with the delightful Donna Eden and David Feinstein about their book, Energies of Love. Go to their website, energiesoflove.com and take that quiz and I hope you'll join us next week uh, for our uh, show. And in the meantime, have a blessed week. Don and David, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, Miriam. It sure has been a pleasure, Miriam. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>